Savage Lane, made sure his hunting rifle was loaded with dry shot, and then he slid the weapon into his saddle. Anger boiled within him as he looked at the gun. The man he was there to find had to be stopped at all costs, because what he was spouting out to that gathering of people was poison as far as he was concerned. Burridge was ready to go so far as to put a bullet into that preacher's heart and end all this fanaticism and most importantly, to disperse the droves of people that were being drawn to that little meeting house week after week. But he did promise his wife that he would go and hear what he had to say one time. As he walked into the crowded room, he recognized the preacher right away. How could he not recognize that face? Burridge had carried that face in his arms when he was a baby. He had fed that face as a child. He had patted that head countless times for a job well done. A quiver of emotion ran out his eyes. But as it did, he gritted his teeth and reminded himself that what he was about to do was the only option because the young man would not listen to reason. He swore that this deluded preacher would no longer be an embarrassment to the Lane family name. Burridge was ready to kill the man behind the pulpit, even if it was his own son. I'm Ronnie Brown. And this is Forgotten. A key figure in the spread of Christianity throughout North America during the middle to late 18th century is a Baptist pastor by the name of Shubal Stearns. Shubal Stearns was converted to Christ in 1746 under the ministry of British evangelist George Whitfield during one of his North American preaching tours. Not long after his conversion, Shubal Stearns began to preach and to assemble a small group of congregants, mostly his family, to form the nucleus of a Baptist church. Being led by what he considered to be a divine vision, he moved the fledgling flock out of Connecticut to Virginia, settling near his sister and brother-in-law, Daniel and Martha Marshall. Meeting resistance to their exuberant manner and the Baptist doctrines they held, The group traveled southward, resettling in the Piedmont area of North Carolina in 1775, and there they organized the Sandy Creek Separate Baptist Church on November 22nd of the same year. During those early days, Stearns and Marshall would make evangelistic trips into the surrounding areas, and in the summer of 1758, Stearns and Marshall were preaching along the Virginia-North Carolina border. Titans Lane, along with his wife Esther, had been attending these meetings. During this time, Dutton, Titan's brother, was visiting and accompanied the family to the rather spirited gathering. It was there that through the powerful preaching of Shubal Stearns, Dutton Lane was shaken to his core, and he left the meeting with deep concern about his soul standing before holy God. Not long after this, he came to faith in Jesus Christ. An account of his conversion is given by historian Morgan Edwards. Quote, As Dutton was returning from hunting with the game and his rifle in his hands, he fancied that he saw the devil standing in the way before him, upon which he stopped, meditating what to do. To go on, he thought, was daring, and to fly cowardly firing at him, he judged, would be vain. Therefore, he turned on one side and took another path. When he came between him and home, He fancied the devil was pursuing him, and dared not to look back. He quickened his pace until he came near the house, then bolted the door and fell down with rifle and game and all on the floor. After continuing in this situation for a while, he came to himself, but never got rid of the fear till he was plucked as a brand out of the burning. How true it is that some are saved with fear, end quote. As with many that were born again in the fires of revival that were stirred by Shubal Stearns, Dutton Lane began to preach in short order. Although he had little education, he was physically stout and had a booming voice and an unquenchable zeal to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Wherever Stearns and Marshall went, they left the makings of a New Testament church in their wake. These small groups of believers begged for preachers to come and teach them the Word of God. Dutton Lane was one of those whose dynamic preaching was in great demand. 
By 1764, he had been ordained and assigned the pastorate of the first separate Baptist church in Virginia, organized at Dan River. In 1772, Lane had organized five different preaching stations in his area with assistance to help meet the needs of his congregants. This explosion of growth among Baptist churches infuriated Dutton's father, Burridge Lane, who saw his son's departure from their family's Church of England religious tradition as an embarrassment and believed in doing so his son had renounced God. But Burridge's argued objections turned violent when he found out his wife, who he had expressly forbidden to go hear Dutton preach, had sneaked away one evening to attend a meeting. Upon finding her, he physically removed her from the gathering and brutally horsewhipped her. This event solidified his decision to take his own son's life. Enraged, he grabbed his hunting rifle and prepared to make the journey back to the area and locate his son. His wife, fearlessly trying to talk some sense into her husband, wisely appealed to his hunting instincts. She asked him, quote, When you are hunting a bird and you have the animal in your sights, don't you wait a moment and give the bird an opportunity to fly away before you pull the trigger? Shouldn't you show your own son the same moment of mercy that you would show a bird? End quote. As angry as he was, her words rang with a compelling argument. So Burridge promised to listen to one sermon from Dutton before he made his final decision. True to his word, Burridge Lane attended a meeting where his son Dutton was preaching. While sitting uncomfortably among the worshipers, he glared at his offspring with murderous rage in his heart. As Dutton took to the pulpit, the words of his wife echoed in the mind of Burridge, quote, Don't you wait and give the bird an opportunity to fly away before you pull the trigger? End quote. The more he listened to the earnest message of his son, the strangest thing began to happen. The bird in his sights began to take flight. Dutton's sermon, which no doubt called for every sinful heart to come and believe upon the Christ that had died for their sins on the cross, became as radiant as the sun to the mind of Burridge and melted the stony heart of this father who, like his son, set aside the empty forms of religious tradition and laid hold of the saving grace and mercy of God that is alone found in Christ Jesus. Shortly thereafter, Burridge Lane was baptized by the son that he had every intention of murdering in cold blood. obstinate and hard. The Bible pictures their hearts as hard as a stone and describes their faces as inflexible as iron or brass. No amount of the water of emotional enticement can soften them, and the hammer blows of religious threatenings only serve to shatter and scar them. It takes a divine miracle to change the nature of the human heart altering its adamant hardness toward God into a malleable mass of human will shaped by the hands of an all-wise potter. This is the new covenant promise that echoes through the pen of the prophet Ezekiel, reminding us that no heart is so hardened, no life is sold so deep into sin that it cannot be retrieved and made new. For thus saith the Lord God, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. The story of Dutton Lane and his father, Berridge Lane, is a fascinating one, but I did find 
Another interesting fact from the life of Dutton Lane that I'd like to share with you. Stay tuned after this commercial break, and I'll tell you all about it. Not long after I created the first two episodes of the Forgotten Podcast, I was asked by a friend if I would be willing to share the transcripts with them. That request was the first of many. And since then, I have had the goal of editing them and compiling them for publication. I'm glad to say that I have completed this work and formed them into two books, Forgotten Salvations and Martyrs and Forgotten Servants and Missionaries. These two books are available both physically and digitally. You can order your softcover copy of each book at ForgottenPodcast.com slash books. Each book order will be accompanied with several Forgotten Podcast promotional items such as cards, bookmarks, and decals. Both of these books are also available in digital form for the Amazon Kindle. You can find them on Amazon by using the link ForgottenPodcast.com slash Kindle. That's ForgottenPodcast.com slash K-I-N-D-L-E. I hope that these two volumes will serve as a source of encouragement and blessing to you. Lunenburg County is in the beautiful countryside of South Central Virginia, about 30 or 40 miles of rugged mountain terrain northeast of the Dan River. It was in this area of the Dan River that Dutton Lane came to faith in Jesus Christ and immediately began to preach in the summer of 1758. Later that same year, Dutton made his way up to Meharon in the Lunenburg County area and began to preach. It was not long before his evangelistic efforts drew the attention of many in the community. And as it was with Shubal Stearns, people began to attend the preaching services in droves. This religious stirring garnered not only the attention of the people of the community, but also the local magistrate, Joseph Williams. Not a religious man himself, Williams was suspicious of the animated and persuasive young man and was determined to put an end to whatever he was trying to do. One evening, the magistrate burst into the meeting and interrupted Dutton Lane's preaching mid-sentence. As the local representative of the law, the preacher and the congregation went silent and every eye was set on his intimidating presence. Joseph Williams made it absolutely clear that the young preacher was no longer welcome in their community and charged him to leave immediately and never return to preach again. Dutton Lane responded by assuring him that there were numerous other communities in which he could freely preach and never receive such a provoking objection as he encountered tonight. Dutton abruptly ended his discourse and closed the service in prayer. After sharing some parting words of blessing and peace upon those gathered, he once again addressed the hostile magistrate saying, quote, Little sir, as you now think it, my impressions tell me that you will become a Baptist, a warm espouser of the cause which you now persecute, end quote. Many years later, Samuel Harris, a converted militia colonel, become powerful preacher, and another minister named Jeremiah Walker made their way through the same region holding evangelistic services similar to that of Dutton Lane. A spark of revival fell upon the community in 1768, and a large number of people were saved, baptized, and brought into membership with the church nearest them, Nottaway Church. A close look at Lunenburg County Court records shows that in 1770, a request for the establishment of a public place of worship was granted for a group from the Nottaway Church. The following year, a group of 108 Christians became charter members of the Meharan Baptist Church. Among the names of these charter members was a local magistrate named Joseph Williams, whose name appears not only among the membership, but on the request to establish the church, and he was ordained as a deacon of the newly formed assembly, just as Dutton Lane had perceived 12 years earlier. Meharan Baptist Church has a long history as a mother church of many other churches, and several able pastors and evangelists were raised up from among its membership. 
This is yet another testimony of the life-changing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Forgotten is an Unseen Hand media production written and produced by me, Ronnie Brown. You can find out more about this show at ForgottenPodcast.com. I am also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Forgotten Podcast. Forgotten is available on all of the most popular podcasting apps, so be sure to subscribe. Also, please stop in and leave a rating and review on iTunes. And as always, thanks for listening.